I was involved with this charity in Israel to raise money for victims of terror. Mm -hmm. Kids who need like um, prosthetic legs and kids who need like prosthetic arms and okay. um, blind sailors and whatever. And I was helping them raise money in the United States. And this was like when PayPal was first getting big. So I had to set up a PayPal account for them. And they were going around the country using this PayPal account that I had set up for them to raise, to raise money. And they were raising a lot of money around America, you know, going on a whole tour of donations. And what had happened was PayPal shut down the, froze the account because they said they're not a real nonprofit because they're a nonprofit in Israel, but they didn't get their 501c3 in the US. Right, okay. So PayPal froze all their money and they looked at me and they're like, what happened? I was like, I mean, I don't know. And that made me realize that a lot of times you think that it's your money, but it's not your money. Mm -hmm. And when I found out about Bitcoin, someone started talking to me about it and um, I started playing around, you know, and I, started, I just downloaded, you know, I downloaded um, um, Bitcoin D and then the Bitcoin QT at the time. So Bitcoin, before the term Bitcoin core came, there was two iterations of Bitcoin. There was Bitcoin QT, and this was the downloadable software that you could download on your Mac or PC or Linux. And actually when you ran it, it was a node, it was your wallet and it mined. So right. as it was software was open, you were mining. So everyone was mining. Someone asked me, when did you start? Did you ever mine Bitcoin? I was like, everyone mined Bitcoin. It's just what you did. You weren't in a pool. You no, no, went... everyone mined Bitcoin on their own because the software mined for you. So, just... so did you solve some blocks? That you must have yeah, solved... of course I did. Everyone did. So everyone when it did, was it blocks. like, a, wow, fuck, I got No, one. it didn't because Bitcoin had no value. Ah, uh, okay. There was okay. no tradability, really. There was like one website that was literally just like a Google spreadsheet that got one guy manually updated of bids and offers of people. This is pre Mount Gox. Well, yeah, that was the Bitcoin exchange. It was like 10,000 Bitcoin for $5. You know, it wasn't real. So um, Gavin ran a faucet that was basically giving away. You, you put your address on the faucet and you get 100 Bitcoin. I fuck 100 I know. Bitcoin. And right. it's just who cares? Like Bitcoin wasn't <laughs> worth anything back then. And I used to hear about people used to buy on like eBay and someone would send them the money and then they would send them the Bitcoin. Sure. Could you imagine that happening now? It, you wouldn't get the Bitcoin. No, you never get it. Um, and so that's what... That's what it was like back then. And so when I downloaded the software, I generated address, an address, you know, and my friend Joe, he, him and I were into tech together. So he was at his house in New Jersey. I was in New York. And I had told him, download the software, generate an address, and I'll send it to you. I'll send you some Bitcoin. So he downloaded the software, and I sent him 500 Bitcoin. And it 500. Didn't, it didn't go through. Like, he never got it. Until today, uh. I don't know why he never got it. I think I know why. I think because he didn't sync... He didn't have his ports open. He didn't sync the chain. So it actually did send to him. And I remember years later, I was like, Joe, you got to find that laptop. Like you got your private yeah. keys are on that laptop. He's like, no, I threw it away years ago. I was like, it's oh like my $5 God. million dollars today. Yeah, I know. And so you're like, you got to find it. But that was so. So as I was starting to understand it, the way I, it clicked was I was had this software and he had it. And I was like, OK, it's like a downloadable version of PayPal, except these units called Bitcoins aren't worth shit. So yeah. who cares? Why does this thing such a big deal? And then I had started reading more about it. And I was talking to all my friends in the IRC network and we started chatting about Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin was talked about on IRC and on, on the Bitcoin forums, but IRC was bigger. Like everyone talked about, it on, like you could at one point, I remember in 2012, we got every, every mining pool, every exchange and every major business in one IRC chat room. Wow. Because there was a, there was in 2012, I think it was 2012, 2013, when we upgraded to Bitcoin version nine, it wasn't compatible with version eight and it was a big hard fork and the chain actually split. Half the miners were mining on one chain and the other miners and we were able to get everyone in the room together and basically like have everyone drop one chain and continue mining on the other chain. Right. That was a big deal. Yeah, I remember that. I was like out of bar mitzvah and I had to go home because I was running BitInstant and we were running the nodes of one chain. We had to like stop me, BitPay, Mount Gox, Trade Hill. Um, fuck, I think that was it. <laughs> that wasn't, there wasn't no one else. All right. Uh, how, like pause. Uh, how many Bitcoin do you reckon you've like? But wait, before you, oh, so yeah. you've asked me how, why it clicked for me. Yeah. And. Because it's got no value. So what happened was, I, as I understood it, when I, you literally open up the database file on your computer and you're seeing in real time, this file is the size of this file is, is increasing. So imagine you have a file on your computer that's constantly increasing. 
You're like, why is it 100 megabytes and now it's 101 and then it's 102? The file size increasing because what's happening is in real time, your database is getting all the transactions of everyone else using it in real time. So I maintain a copy of the blockchain in real time of not just my, our, my transactions, but everyone else's. And that clicked for me because now I realized, oh, so, so this, this ledger is actually completely decentralized. Not, and I didn't even use the word decentralized because that wasn't like a lingo. But I said this ledger is now actually like main, being maintained on everyone's computers in real time. So no one can freeze it. No one can reverse it. No one can counterfeit. No one can double spend. Like that's when it really clicked for me. Right. So, okay. So at that point, you're like, I get it. Now it needs to have some kind of value. Now it needs to have some kind of value. And that's yeah. when I started Bit Instant. Okay. So just back in those early days, how many Bitcoin do you reckon you've just given away or lost just fucking about? How many have I given away or lost? Yeah. Hundreds, if not thousands. Thousands of Bitcoin. It's mad, there's, right? There's a YouTube video out there of a guy who made up a theme song about Bit Instant. You can, anyone can YouTube it right now and find that it's by this good Chow Dong or uh, Zhu Tong or whatever. And in the comments of the video, you can see it till today. You can see it in the comments. I said, hey, man, give me your Bitcoin address. I want to send you some Bitcoin. And I meant to send him five Bitcoin because it was worth like $100 at the time. So I was giving him like 500 bucks. And I accidentally sent him 50 Bitcoin. And I was like, he's like, should I send it back? I was like, nah, man, just keep it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the people these days are just like, I just want to get one Bitcoin. I just yeah. want to get the set. One is one. a big number, you know, even one Bitcoin. It's not, think about it. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Yeah, but it's less really when you think, if you're really honest, because what, the 4 million they reckon have been lost? Maybe more than that. Yeah. It'll be a lot less than that. Maybe half. Yeah. So you say 17 million, but did you, did, was it you who tweeted out recently? You said you're only going to need five. You only need five. You only need five. You'll only need five in like 10 or 20 years from now. You know, life changing money. $5 million, one Bitcoin, $1 million, $5 million is enough money to start to have that money work for you. And you could live off the interest, you know, cause that's everyone that's wealth. Wealth is not the amount of money you have. Wealth is when you have money that's working for you to make you more money and you can sit back and do nothing for the rest of your life. And you'll just have income coming in. That's wealth. So you've discovered Bitcoin, you get in your head around it and then you decide you want to create a business. No, no, not yet. I, um, Knowing me, I always have side hustles. So my first foray into earning money with Bitcoin was I would go on eBay and I would buy like airline vouchers, like JetBlue vouchers and American airline vouchers from people and then resell those vouchers for Bitcoin okay. at, at a profit. That was how I would earn Bitcoin. Okay. And then? And then... I started selling a lot of my daily checkout products on online to earn Bitcoin too, like knives and stuff like that. I would sell knives and throwing knives and all this stuff. I would sell <laughs> um, anything I could sell. Really, I would sell for Bitcoin on the forums. And then one day I was just browsing the forums. It was about oh, like May 2011, and I see a post by the, I see a post by this guy named Gareth Nelson, UK. And he's like, "Hey, I have an idea to make buying Bitcoin faster." Going back to what I said earlier, the thing had no value. So in the back of my mind, I was always saying, this thing needs to, you know, I need to get some. And I was, I was content with the community that we had, right? The community that we had was a great little community. It wasn't meant to grow into this whole thing it was today. We just wanted to be a stable little community of people transacting with each other on these forums and using Bitcoin to do it. That's all it was. If if the economics of Bitcoin and people buying and selling and holding it never went beyond this forum and th these marketplaces, like these message boards, they're totally fine with me. Like that's what it was. And that was never meant to be this whole thing. It was this social experiment at the end of the day. Um, but then, and then so Gareth had posted this thing and he's like, I, I have an idea to make buying Bitcoin easier. And again, the idea to make, Buy, buying Bitcoin easier. It wasn't so I can get my grandma to buy Bitcoin. It was so people on the forums can be able to have the way to buy and sell Bitcoin faster so we can all transact with each other. And so Gareth had an idea and the idea was bit instant. He called it something else. He had a very basic idea. And so what I did was, is I messaged him back and the, the post is public. I said, I like this idea. How much money do you need to start it? He's like, I need a thousand dollars. I said, all right, let's do it together. We'll own it 50, 50. And 
that was the start of a beautiful relationship, business relationship together. And we started Binistant, which uh, very quickly later was the largest Bitcoin company ever. Um, we had like 30 people working for us. And I started it in my basement. I didn't intend for it to be like this whole business. It was like a side hustle. Um, and the rest so this came kind of before Mt. Gox? This was during the same time as Mt. Gox. About the same Mt. Gox was very difficult to buy Bitcoin. You'd have to wire money to some Japanese guy's personal bank account. And it was just manual and it was shady and weird. And then once you have the money on the exchange, you have to like buy Bitcoin with it. You want to like just buy Bitcoin. You don't have to like enter in a, a bid order and ask on the exchange. It's complicated. Actually, prior to uh, the Japanese account, it, it was wired to Jed's Chase account. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So that's what, and then before he sold it to Mark. So how did BitInstant do it differently? What BitInstant did was BitInstant would maintain large accounts at Mt. Gox already. And we did it through various credit agreements with Mt. Gox, or we'd actually wire him a few hundred thousand dollars and leave it there. And then what we'd do is we'd have people in the U.S., We'd have bank accounts here, and we had relationships with like Walgreens and CVS and Dwayne Reed and Walmart, where you can walk into these locations, deposit money with them, and then our software would instantly move money from from our account at the exchange to your account at the exchange. Right. Okay. So, tell me the journey from it being you two with a thousand dollars to being thirty people. It just grew very quickly. Um, I had the original thousand dollars, and then I borrowed money from my mom, like ten grand, and then Roger Veer put in a hundred and something thousand dollars, and then Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss put in one point five million dollars. How did you meet them? I had another investor, David, who, who I knew from Brooklyn, um, and he was this kind of crazy, wacky guy, really nice guy, and he was in Ibiza on vacation with his wife, and he saw them like just out on the beach and he offered them his beach chair and said hey have you heard about this bitcoin thing and they're like no and he sold them on it like literally on the beach and then they were still very unconvinced but they had heard about it you know through him and from their research and so they called me up out of the blue and they were like hey um we heard you're the bitcoin kid can you convince us it's the future and i said hell yeah i can <laughs> where do i start and less than a month or two later, they were f jumping in full, you know, head first or feet first or whatever the term is. And was that with them ac accumulating Bitcoin or is where, where did they, it? They had first invested, they had first made, you know, an inclination. They wanted to invest in it and let it grow. And they also want to start accumulating Bitcoin. Right. And so that was their job. That's what they asked me to help them do is start accumulating Bitcoin for them. Okay, but they came and put one and a half million dollars in the business. In the business, yeah. And a good relationship to begin with? Yeah, it was a pretty good relationship over the course of time. And, you know, I have some regrets by how the relationship went. But I was, uh, I was a, you know, a young kid who walked around like a shit didn't stink. I was on top of the world. I was the king of the world. And these guys were basically trying to tell me, like, hey, like, the company's growing. You have no experience being a CEO. Why don't we get a professional CEO to run this company? And I was like, no. And in hindsight, I should have listened to them. And I wish I had, because now it's like every startup CEO's dream to be big enough where you have a real professional come in and take over the company. You get to become chairman and just kick back and relax. Yeah, I guess in hindsight, you, I mean, could have bit instant been the Coinbase as such? I'll tell you why no, because Coinbase had learned from all of our mistakes and Literally, he did. He invited me over to his house in California, Brian Armstrong, without ever telling me that he was starting Coinbase. And we sat for three hours, and I told him, like, everything about Ben Instant. And then he's like, oh, now that thank you for telling me everything. I'm starting my own competitor to you. <coughs> okay, that's literally how it went down. You know who else was in that room? Uh, Jared Kenna, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, and Roger Veer was there. Roger Veer seems to be in all these meetings. He's everywhere. <laughs> we, were, we were so close back then. Um, but that was the whole Bitcoin community. Like there wasn't many meetings. There was like 10 people. It was the whole space. So it was you. It was so small. Roger, Eric. Yeah. No, Eric wasn't even involved yet. Wasn't even involved at that No, one. no. Eric didn't get involved until 2012 in the crypto space. Okay. So you take the 1.5 million. How's it go to begin with? The company is just growing. It's growing. It's expanding. We're moving offices. It's going crazy. Okay. Um, 
and everything was really good. And then, you know, the, um, we, we built our software to, to operate a certain way and we built our company for a certain way. And then the government came out and said, you need these money transmitter licenses. And that's when we decided that we didn't have them. So we shut down the company. It was very difficult to do. Why didn't you apply for the... It's for too the expensive. It was tens of millions of dollars that I didn't have. And I got a little burnout. I was running BitInstant for almost three years at this point. I was tired. I didn't really, I didn't really want to do it anymore. So we shut down. We gave back the investors their money. Um, you know, we paid the Winklevoss back their debt. And we shuttered. And I wasn't sad about it because I was like there were a lot and I could admit this and I was able to admit it back then too there are a lot other com a lot better companies that had launched that are doing what that instant was doing but better and nicer and easier and I was like but instant served its purpose it was the first company it had a goal it had a mandate and its mandate was over it, its mandate was Let's get Bitcoin in the hands of as many people as possible, as cheap and as fast as possible to get this thing where it can stand on its own two feet. And by the time we shut down the company, that mandate was completed. And so I wasn't sad about shutting the company and I wanted to move on to other things. Cameron and Tyler have expressed opinions about how you run the company as well, right? Yeah. And they've not been the most positive about it. Oh, they're hundred percent right. So they were fair. Oh, they're, yeah. I mean, Everyone's going to exaggerate. They're going to exaggerate about me. I'm going to exaggerate them. I didn't. I was this 22, 23 year old kid running a multi million dollar startup in the money, financial money transmission space. I literally was winging it every morning. I'd wake up and be winging this thing. Right. Okay. No idea what I was doing, but I was terrified. But the adrenaline was amazing. Did you ever suffer from hacks with BitInstant? Bit we were very fortunate that we only had one hack and we were able to stop it and only lose about 10 grand. Okay, that's what you're So, 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 I, I pray, I, we kind of joke, me and my friends now, it's like we were the only Bitcoin company that shut down where no one lost any money. <laughs> like all of our customers got paid out 100%, they're all good, you know, like no one, we didn't take anyone's money or anything. All right, so you closed and down. That's the something to be very proud of because yeah, all course. these exchanges shut down and they, they take away everyone's money. 